Okay, guys, there we go. Look, I'm heading across to Dobbinson Springs suspension in Dandenong today, and we're going to rebuild the MRR shocks that I've got on my patrol. Now, they've been on my patrol for about three and a half years, and fair to them, they've been through the ringer, i got to tell you. But they're still riding fantastically after all those years of punishment. Because they've been through border track in South Australia, both Fraser and Morton Islands in Queensland, and endless punishing tracks around the border of Victoria and I country. So, I'm going to be really keen to see what sort of condition they're in when we get them apart, because they still ride really, really well. So, we'll catch up with you a bit later on and see what they're like. years that the MRRs have been on patrol, they've been absolutely fair through the ringer. So I'm really looking forward to see what we find today once these get pulled apart. Absolutely. So yep. where do we sort of go from here? Well for starters we just we'll go over the vehicle quickly and make sure that no bushes or normal wear and tear items or you know everything's okay there. Then we'll pull all the four shocks out and we'll pull them down for you and we'll rebuild them and we'll show you how it's done. Oh, fantastic let's get into it eh? No worries. rear ones out so I'm pretty keen to see what they do look like when we do get them pulled apart but before we do I just want to give us a bit of an explanation about how the MRR shocks yep. actually work. Yeah absolutely Tim no problem. I've got one here it's a cutaway one so we can have a look at closely. We've got the main piston and valving assembly here um, and the gas reservoir is actually mounted remotely in this chamber. So, this one here. so we can have a long piston length, uh, shaft length which allows us to have a very short closed length and open length on the, on the shock absorber itself. High pressure gas chamber here, um, this is all full of oil through here and that gas pressure that actually pressurises the uh, oil to stop cavitation. Well, Richard, what is it you're going to demonstrate for us here with this? Right Tim, glad you asked. This is a demonstration shock absorber, a high pressure monotube design. And here, punters out there can see, is the gas chamber and then the reservoir piston in the middle. Now when your shock absorber goes up and down, <laughs> let's try and get that close to the camera so you can see, you can see the cavitation that it creates yeah, and right. that's what happens to your shock absorber by the time you get to the end of the street. Just from the constant going up and down. Absolutely, just, to just up and down, that's all it takes. Now in this chamber here, if I pressurise that, I'm just going to use a bit of air to simulate the uh, nitrogen. As soon as I do it, on that, just force a bit of air into there, and you can see it stops the cavitation. cavitation. So the oil under pressure oh, from the gas chamber down the end here stops the cavitation, and then keeps the oil consistent, the valving consistent, and the oil won't break it down. Stops or that shock fade. And sh uh, absolutely, and that's a major, absolutely consistent damping. When we use nitrogen in the shock absorber because that's an inert gas and it doesn't change the temperature. temperature right? yeah, right. yeah. So that yeah. is how a monotube shock absorber works. Under duress when it's working at high temperatures and things like that the oil will remain stable and it works back and forth through the piston without any fading or any changes involving the dynamics. So this is this is essentially used in motorsport all over the world this type of design and we're yeah, lucky right. to have that for normal four drive use. Yeah, well, they certainly work very, very well in my, my vehicle, there's no yep. doubt about that. And uh, so I reckon we get stuck into this rebuild. And uh, absolutely. Let's see what they look like inside. So what's this process you're doing here, Richard? Todd? Well, the eyes actually lock tight it on. And it wouldn't matter how hard you tried to undo it, you'd never be able to undo it. So we have to heat it up to actually um, destroy the lock tight 
and when we put the back on, we'll re lock tighter back on again. So that should be enough to no break worries. the Look at that. lock tight. What are Richards in here? We've got the boot off. How are things looking at the moment? Yeah, good. First of all, we actually have a look at the overall wear and tear on the shaft, and the shaft's in excellent condition considering it's been used for three years. It's going to be straightforward rebuild. First, before we pull anything apart, uh, apart we're going to release the gas out of the uh, chamber. We've got a dust, a dust cap there, plus a valve cap on the Schroeder valve. Remove that, and we'll remove the nitrogen gas out of the system. Look at that. There's the gas. Now the shock absorber is actually safe to work on. Without releasing the gas, it's quite dangerous to actually work well, I'm on the pressure it's still. Yep, now it's the pressure's been released. So now we can move forward and actually start now. What I'm removing now is the dust cap. Which exposes the seal pack underneath. So there's always a little bit of oil that bleeds past the main seal pack to actually lubricate the shaft. It's an important element of any high performance monotube shock. And we always get a little bit of like a film of oil. Sometimes they can build up around the shock base and so forth. Not to be confused with the seal failing or anything like that. It does that from day one and will do it for the life of the shock. Yeah, right. Very important in the lubrication part of the, uh, of the shaft and the seal to keep everything in good condition. Now we remove the circlip that holds it all together. And there we have it. How's that all look? Excellent. The oil's actually in very good condition. They're pretty clean. For three years worth of use, that's in excellent condition. So mainly what we're going to do today, there's a Teflon band around the piston itself. Yep. And as you can see there, put it to the camera. You can see the shim stack on the rebound side and then on the compression side, this side. So there's two different valvings there. So we'll remove the Teflon band. We'll give that a clean. Do that. That's the old or see the fair bit in it. Absolutely. Mm. Yep. But there's also oil caught up in the uh, reservoir. So next we're going to remove the end of the reservoir and remove the dividing piston. With the dividing piston out. Yes, we've got the first one that's pulled apart. Yep. How do things look now? You now you've seen it as it is. Uh, good, excellent. The, we've cleaned the the body completely with washing um, that completely clean all the inside. So the examine the inside and everything's fine. We've also checked out the, the shaft and actually looked at the close look at the wear and tear on the shaft and the shaft's in excellent condition. So this is basically a very straightforward rebuild now. We're going to replace the main seal pack. This is sort of looks a little bit different. It's only because it's got the Mark II version of this of this one. Yep. Um, some improvements have been made in the, the quality and the longevity of the seal pack. Um, the, we'll replace our rings on the dividing piston. Um, that's in excellent condition. And so basically from this stage, but what I am going to show you, I'm going to pull the shim stack apart and give you an idea of how that works. So if we're going to make some valving changes, I'll show you how it's done. Right, what we've got here, we've got the shim stack apart. This is the working piston. The oil flows through the piston 
and actually has to force past the shim and make it flex. And this is why these shock absorbers are what are referred to as velocity sensitive. So how these shims, the, the size and the thickness of the shims determines the, um, the valving characteristics. So this has all been well thought out and actually tried and tested on each individual vehicle. So this is the valving for a Nissan Patrol. Everything's clean already, new seal pack's been put on the shaft. So first of all, I'm just gonna put some sort of assembly grease on here, to lubricate things. We're gonna put the dividing piston back into the chamber first. Into the remote reservoir. The new O-ring. Nice, beautiful, all ready to go. Then we'll change that around and we'll fill the shock with oil. Here. High boiling temperature. So what I'm doing now is I'm actually purging the air out of the system so it's completely bled right through, no air in the system right through into the dividing chamber in the reservoir. Yeah, if we can keep the Teflon nicely there. Back in. The next stage is regassing with nitrogen gas. Check everything is seated correctly. Now that I've got it assembled, a quick test of what we do is called a stroke test. Very simple, straightforward, put our weight on the shock, and we push it down and we make sure that everything is working perfectly. And as you can see, as the gas pressure is forcing the displacement of the oil, it's slowly pushing the shaft down. Well mate, that's the first one rebuilt out of the four of them. It Certainly was really is. interesting to see how they all yep. sort of work and see the internals of the MRRs. So we've got three more to do. That's exactly so right. we get into it, eh? Absolutely, let's do it. rebuilding the shocks for me today. Um, now looking forward to get out in the bush and try them out even though they were fantastic before but uh, we'll get out and give them another hide uh, and see how they go. Absolutely. Yep. Four rebuilt shocks. Good for a few more years Tim yep. and um, yeah get out there and have a go. Thank absolutely you enjoy it. No, greatly appreciate it. You're welcome. Well there you go guys if you want to find out more what suspension options you've got that's suitable for your vehicle give the guys here a call down at Dobinson Springs Suspension at Dandenong on 03 97065200 and fair chance, see you at the bush someday.